So our scripture today is from Luke. It's chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. Now as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. But Martha was distracted with much serving. And she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. And so I called this different personalities. And so on the one hand, I, I think it's kind of this clash of temperaments. So some of us are like, got to be doing stuff all the time, 150 miles an hour people. And some of us are not, okay? And this is a story about two sisters. And so one of them, I, and so Thanksgiving is the time I think about. And so when we go to Birmingham at Thanksgiving, Benita and her uh, youngest sister does all the cooking now. And they get up like at five in the morning and start hams and turkeys and stuff boiling, things you don't even want to know how get made. And, and they're running around the kitchen like crazy people. You know what? One year, their mom was in a car accident coming to their house for Thanksgiving. And the two girls went to the hospital and the granddaughters were at home. And you know what? Those granddaughters got the meal made somehow. So they thought all this time it could only happen if it was them. Now there was a lot of phone calls about how to cook this and what temperature and stuff like that. But when we got home, everything was done. And, and so they thought it had to be them all the time. And it really didn't. Well, that's what's happening here. Martha is saying, oh, we have this guest. And we have to make a meal. And we have to do this. And we have to rush, rush, rush. And then what she's really saying is, I am mad because my sister is not helping me. I'm doing all the work. And she's just sitting there talking to you. If you didn't know better, she, you'd think she was a man at Thanksgiving watching a football game or prayed with the grandkids, right? And so no matter which side of that you're on, it's hard for you to understand it because you think everybody should be like you. Mary doesn't mind because she thinks everybody should be like her. So I bet you guys didn't know this, but we're not all alike. And God needs all of us, however we are, to make the world go round and round. And so we don't have to all be the same. And so I think what this is really about is it's being kind, but we don't always see what kindness is needed. And so for Jesus, he's on his way uh, to Jerusalem. He's going to have to decide whether he's going to follow what God wants him to do and allow himself to be put, placed on the cross and to die. But Martha's going... Well, he's my guest. I've got to cook. I've got to clean. I've got to make all this stuff. And she's rushing around, fussed, must, probably dusted the furniture on the way in. I mean, she's just doing everything. But that's not what was really wanted at that time. Jesus was looking for peace and quiet, for a calmness. So he's looking at the cross before him, but he really needs a time of peace. He doesn't need all this stuff going around. And so although Martha was saying she was doing everything that needed to be done, Mary was probably really giving him what he wanted. And so when we try to be kind, sometimes we're not very kind because we're going to be kind in the way we want to be kind. So I just finished reading a book. When I'm not going to class, I read a lot in case you guys haven't figured it out. This one's about generations. So there's five different generations that are in the workplace right now and probably in here. So I'm a boomer, a lot of us in here are boomers. And you know what? Boomers and millennials have difference of opinion and stuff. I bet you guys didn't know this. I figured out after reading the book, although one of them's barely, all three of my daughters are millennials. And here's one way you can tell. Now even though the book says it's sort of a generality, it seemed to me to be pretty accurate. If I call them, and ask them a question, what do I get back? They a what? They Google. No, if I call and ask them a question, they have to respond back to me. How do they respond? 
No, they don't call back. What do they do? They text. If I wanted to text, I would have sent them a text, right? Those millennials. <laughs> and on their side, you know what they're doing is, why did dad call me and leave a message? It's a miracle I even saw it. I'm going to text him back. Which just aggravates me. <laughs> because if I wanted to text, I would have sent a text to start with. And so one day, I finally called until she answered. She goes, Dad, I sent you an answer. And I said, you know what? If I wanted to text back, I would have texted you to start with. She goes, well, it's easier for me to text. And I said, well, it's easier for me to call. <laughs> okay? That's what's going on with Mary and Martha. They both think they're doing what's best, but the problem is it's only what's best for them. It's not what's best for the person they're trying to do something with or for. And so you can say, oh, well, you know, Martha's one person and, and Mary's another, but we all do that same thing. We'll be trying to say, oh, this is a man's point of view. So ladies, if you think I'm wrong. So a woman will say, so Benita does this to me. She'll say, she'll start talking about something. And then I'm thinking, how can I fix that? How can I fix that? And so one day she's doing something and I said, well, here's what you do. She goes, I don't want to do that. I thought, well, why are you talking to me about it again? So I figured out later on, she didn't really want me to fix it. She just wanted to talk about it. So in the 30 some years we've been married, the way I do it now is that she will start telling me something and I'll go, I have a question. She goes, what is it? I go, am I just listening or am I supposed to be able to fix this when you're done? She goes, you're just listening. Okay, just wanted to know what I'm supposed to be doing. <laughs> be because I'm thinking, I'll fix it, I'll fix it, I'll fix it. It doesn't matter. Well, it does, like heating and cooling, we wouldn't be fixing that. I did fix a refrigerator once, but fix is kind of a loose term. Um, it depends on what it is. But we do that. We try, to, we try to anticipate what the person wants, and then it has to be something we want to do because if it's not something we want to do, we're not going to do it. But we don't pay attention to the person that needs it. So in the story of Jesus, Mary, and Martha, Jesus really just needed a place to rest, a place to calm down. Martha didn't see that. Martha's thinking, well, we've got to feed him, we've got to clean the house, we've got to take care of this, we've got to do this. And Mary's just sitting there listening to him. Because sometimes we all need somebody just to listen to us. So I watched the two grand boys on Friday. Not always a good time for me because I'm not, I, I'm not the most patient person in the world. But it was going pretty well and I took them to the zoo. Now the good thing is I like the zoo. The bad thing is after two hours they're going to want to go home. Which it was really hot on Friday so that was sort of a plus on both sides. So we're having, we stopped at Mickey D's for lunch. So we're having lunch, and the youngest one and I are talking about what he saw. And I said, so what was the best thing that happened today? Was it seeing the rhinoceros, or the elephants, or the penguins, or the sharks? So he looks up at me and he goes, it was you being with me. Oh. I know. He's getting big birthday present the next time. <laughs> <clears throat> and so for him, it was just me being with him and spending time. And that's really what Jesus was saying to Martha. Martha, I don't need you to do all this junk for me. I need you to just be with me, to spend time with me, to care for me. So both of them loved Jesus. Jesus loved both of them. But the problem is we can really love people sometimes. We just don't do what's needed because we want to do what we want to do and not what they need. So when I was talking to the children's story, I think the hardest thing for us is to not just try to do what we want to do, but to pay enough attention to the person to figure out what they want and what they need. Now, it doesn't mean I'm always, always going to be able to do that, because on the way to the zoo, grandma keeps candy and food in her van. They almost never ride in my car. 
we're going to the zoo. The youngest one isn't in the car seat yet. And he looks at me and he says, I'd like gummy bears. And I said, this is not grandma's van. There are no gummy bears in grandpa's car. And he looked at me like, you're kidding, right? <laughs> and, I, and Sawyer, his brother said, no, grandpa doesn't have candy in his car. And I think then he was thinking, grandpa is a heathen of some sort because <laughs> who would not have candy in the car? Now the funniest thing is that Benita told the boys a week ago that I was coming to watch them. And Sawyer and I have done stuff together. We've gone on overnight trips. And he looked at Grandma and he went, okay. And Ronan looked at Grandma and said, Grandpa's coming by himself? <laughs> and she goes, yes, Ronan, he's gonna watch you all day by himself. You're not coming? <laughs> and he goes, no. And Sawyer says, Ronan, Grandpa can take care of us. He's taken me on trips and he said, he'll get us fed and everything, it'll be okay. Are you sure? <laughs> because he didn't, he didn't trust. He thought that Grandma had to be the one that was there. And so even though Sawyer's saying, oh yeah, I've, I've had these experiences and everything's okay, Ronan's not so sure. He doesn't remember the times that it was just me watching him apparently. What was really important about that was listening to what Ronan's concern was, I'm gonna die because Grandpa doesn't know how to do anything. We're probably gonna starve to death. And if we get in the car, we'll never get out. Because Grandma always made that happen, like some kind of magic or something. I think that's what we learn in this story. It's not what we wanna do, it's what the person needs what we can help them with, how we can share them. And sometimes the best thing you can do for somebody is just listen. Now that is probably the hardest thing to do. I can only tell you from a man's point of view, as soon as start, somebody starts telling me a story, I am trying to figure out a way to fix it. And as I told you, sometimes you're just supposed to listen. I don't know from a woman's point of view, I think Benita would say, I never tell her anything, so that way it never matters. But can we take the time to listen? And when I say listen, I mean really listen, not just hear somebody talk. And so when, we, when I talked about Sophia in the car, she thinks, whether it's true or not, doesn't matter, she thinks that people don't listen to her until you say grandma or mom or whoever to make sure they're paying attention. When Benita's mom was still alive, it, even in the car, she would touch you before she would talk to you because she wanted to make sure you were paying attention to her. And we were driving back from Birmingham one time, which is about a nine hour or 10 hour drive. And after about the 80th time she reached up and touched me, I said, Ruby, do not touch me. <laughs> Just tell me what you want to tell me. She goes, well, I'm not sure you're paying attention. And I said, I tr promise you that I will pay attention no matter what you say. Because she had a little dementia going on and so there could be some really weird stuff come out there. And you just had to go with it. But she was afraid that people didn't listen to her. And no matter whether you're three years old like Ronan or you were, I think Benita's mom was like 88 at that time, we all worry about people not paying attention to us and not listening to us. And whether it's the phone distracting us or the radio, or the TV, or we're reading, or we really don't want to listen because we don't want to hear the same story for the 88th time, whatever it is, we all do that at times in our lives. And, and so in Mary's case, she took the time to listen to what Jesus needed and wanted to say. Martha was working like a crazy woman, but she wasn't doing what he needed. So you can't always be Martha all the time, and you can't always be Mary all the time, but you gotta figure out when you're with people if they need a Martha or a Mary or somebody in between. And, and that's the secret of this message. So when you go out in the world today, if someone starts talking to you, especially if you've never met them before, sometimes that means you're just supposed to listen because that's what they needed. And that's what I'd recommend. That's your homework for this week. Some, if some stranger starts coming up and talking to you, at least listen long enough to decide whether they're really strange or they just really need some help.
Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Fathers, we go out into your world. We will encounter people who need to be heard. As we need to hear you and be guided and directed, let us be open to listening to those around us. Let us find a way to guide them and direct them to your love. Amen.